I will be resetting the NHL with a fantasy draft and selecting 20 players to build a team. For today's challenge, I can only select players that have an even overall. After all my choices have been made, we will assemble the team in franchise mode and simulate with the hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. What unlucky NHL team will we be representing today? Good question. We're gonna find out the answer to that right now. We get the Edmonton Oilers. They were so close. They almost had it. Congrats to the Flow Rider Panthers, though. What a series that was. There will be no owner telling me what to do. There will be no jabroni. However, I did see a video idea that may incorporate jabroni. Out of the 32 teams, we're gonna be picking number nine. Let's find out if I was even in the ballpark or if I was completely wrong. Most likely the latter. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't turn Fantasy Draft on, did I? Run it back. I for one blame Jabroni. All right, how about we make sure this is on this time? I have to stick with whatever number I said before. I believe it was nine, so let's see. Wow. Even overall players. So we can't take Panarin, but we could take Nikita Kucherov. We could take Crosby, Yossi, a lot of great players here. You know what? Now that that weight has been lifted off my shoulders, I'm going to go for a crazy one here and see what happens. Roman, Yossi, we're drafting you first. I was hoping to get a 92 overall goaltender. That was very optimistic, but we do have Jeremy Swayman here at 3.4, 90 overall. That works out just as well. I can take any of the top three, Marshy, Stone, and Stamkos. I feel like Marshy might actually survive another round. It's possible. So I'm going to draft Steve even, and then maybe Marshawn after that if he's still here. I hate to say a toe to so, but there he is. Bradley, 90 overall, and also Pavelski could be the right winger for that line. We're gonna have some veterans, but you know what? Who cares? Does Pavelski survive another round? I'm thinking whether I want to take Malkin or not. He would be a great second line center, but that is risky business. You know what? Gino's always here and I pretty much never take him, so screw it. We're changing things up today. Let's go with Malkin. And guess who's still there? None other than Captain America. 88 overall, Joe Pavelski. Let's try to make the average age of this team like 41. We're going with Brent Burns. He's a right-handed defender. He could pair with Yossi quite well, I feel like. Never mind. Can't take him. 87 overall. Good thing I noticed that right before I selected him. Goss Despair's left-handed, but he is eligible, so I think he's a good pickup for now. There is not a soul on this first screen that is eligible. Chris Tanev making 1.1 is actually outrageous. Maybe there's some cap retention there or something, but either way, he's a right-handed defender. Defensive defenseman, so I don't know if I want him on the first pair, but he still works. Manson's the only 84 overall right-handed defender left. He's also a defensive defenseman, so at this point it is what it is, but you know what? He's still good. Add some grit to the team with Tim Winston. Don't mind if I do. Jordan Eberle's 84 overall with two abilities, and he also shoots right. He could be a second-line sniper. He could move Tim Winston down to the third. Not a big deal. What I want to try finding out is what overall is Tanner Janot, because I always see him having the most fights, but I never select him, but today is going to be that day if he's not gone. This is a really random pick, but on my way to try finding Janot, I located Jack Drury. Sure. Andrew Mangiapane, now a Washington Capital. I had a mission and I am failing it, but you know what? Adam Lowry could finish off our center group and I think that would be a very solid way to do so. I wonder if Tanner Janot already got picked. That is something I didn't consider. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Tanner Janot, 80 overall, is eligible. You better have one fight per game. We need five more players after this, so it is possible that we take Kalorn and still make it work. These guys are very similar, and just because Perron is making a little bit less and can give us some more freedom, gonna go with him. And that freedom is going to afford us a basket of flowers. Let's go, Marc-Andre, as our backup, Tendi. What's with all these right-handed defensive defensemen? At least Shattenkirk's an offensive defenseman. He is 82 overall. One million as well. That's incredible. You know what? Screw it. He's still here and we can make it work. Let's draft Killer. Got about $4 million for two picks, which is easy. Blake Wheeler, 82 overall, less than a mil. Now we only need one player. I just want to make sure we didn't cheat anywhere here. So everybody is an even overall so far. And yeah, we are good. What about goaltending? We should be fine. Awesome. I shouldn't have to mention this, but if they go up or down in overall throughout the year, that doesn't matter. I just had to draft them at an even overall. And you know what? Strictly because he's 39 and I want to try to make this an old team, we're going with Geo. The overview of our draft looks really interesting. We should have good chemistry. We've got abilities. We've got a good goalie. Stud defenseman. Maybe we get it done here. That's a very loose maybe. But you know what? We're going to edit the lines and find out 
Once and for all, what this team looks like chemistry-wise, it is beautiful. Plus five, plus three, plus one, and then a zero down here, but that is A-OK. -okay. You know what? I've got a crazy one for you. I'm gonna move Drury up, give it a 5-3-2 now, and Drury is only 23, so maybe on the third line he will grow a little bit. I have a bad feeling our defensive chemistry is not gonna be ideal, but let's reveal it. That's brutal. Who are you? I didn't draft you. Technically, you can be on the team, but no. If I move Manson up to the first, we have a zero, which is nice. Goss Despair can go here, maybe, and then we do that. Goss Despair is lefty, so that works. What if I move him up? Nope. Leaving it like this, then. In net, we have Jeremy Swayman and Flower. What a team this is. I'm gonna say Brad gets the most points with 89. 46 wins in the lofts. Let's simulate. Watch us just get waxed by every team. I'm not 100% sure that the two are related, but I think as more of a veteran, you should have a bit of a higher poise, typically. So our post-trade deadline should be very solid. We're doing pretty good right now. We are second in the division, but wow, the Golden Knights are slaying. Our division does look really strong, but I feel like barring any kind of crazy collapse, we should be in the playoffs. We have 35 wins at the trade deadline. All right, fine, I'll see who's there, but we're not trading anyone. Sam Reinhardt's on the block, that's crazy. We also got Jake Gensel, Zach Hyman. This thing is stacked. Peter Mrazek and a first round pick headed to Chicago in exchange for Ryan Pulock. I don't feel like reading all that out, but there you go, that's a trade as well. Hyman and Tony D go into Detroit for two firsts. Lindholm, Sherratt, Armia for a first and Minton. Two firsts again for Gensel and Larson this time. We're at 46 wins right now. And we lose out. So we finished with 46, but we are in the playoffs. The Edmonton Oilers finished second in the division with 104 points. The Golden Knights had 109. And the Boston Bruins go on to win the President's Trophy with 111. But third in the league is very good. 19th place, Smashville, sneaking in 86 points. That is disgusting. Arizona had a rough go. They had a nice amount of points. And they had Sydney the Kidney. How dare you do him dirty like that? They have Miro, Luke Hughes. Unbelievable. We didn't really get a whole lot of points, which is kind of surprising to me. Pavelski had 83. Malkin on the second line had 79. Bradley, 77. Definitely expected more out of Steven. Should I move Malkin up or something? Like, what's going on here? I may even move Eberly up to the first line because he's a sniper. So maybe he'll tuck some goals. Both of our goalies had very respectable stats. Flower did not play a lot of games. I thought for sure he would play more than that. Roman Yossi had 66 points. We got 50 from Ghost and then more than a half drop off to Kevin Shattenkirk. Swayman and Samsonov actually tied with 42 wins. Samsonov had a 906. Spencer Knight also had a 906. Quinn Hughes probably getting the Norris with 87. Vancouver brought him back. Montour put up 81 with the Isles. And your Art Ross winner and probably Rocket Richard winner, so gonna clean up at the awards ceremony once again is awesome. Austin Matthews. Crushed it. Let's see if he lived up to expectation. 13 fights, that's pretty good. But of course, Marcus Foligno had more. I just can't win. This makes no sense to me, but here is the President's Trophy winning Boston Bruins. They had Boldy, Bedsy, and Trocek on the first line. Their second line is Lee, Bertuzzi, and Moore. Their bottom six is mid. They had Hampus Lindholm and Brock Faber. Pionk! Samsonov and Net, this team is an international team of mystery. Our first round opponent is the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Their new jerseys look pretty sick, but we have Huberto, Heischer, and Caulfield. Then we got Kempe, Duchesne, Coleman. They have a good team here. I feel like they're better than Boston. Holy crap, they have Kale McCarr. That is terrifying. Playing with Matheson. Then they got Dehan and Burns, who I wanted to draft. Joey Decord is their goaltender. Let's take him on. First three games, everybody knows the rules. You have to know the rules at this point. That's a great start. Big win. Big loss. Okay, we come back with another win, though. Will they make it a best of three? They do. Take the advantage in the best of three, though. No. You know what? I would real-time sim this, but no, I'm not going to. You guys either win or you weren't even worth the time. Okay, you've earned a real-time sim. What a start. Steven Stamko scores pretty much right away, and we have a 1-0 lead. Matt Duchesne's gonna tie it up, though. We are tripling their shots at the moment, but clearly that doesn't mean anything. Nico Heischer is gonna score before the first expires to give Anaheim a lead, heading into two. Let's go, Stammer, again. Give him the hat trick. 
And can we stop giving them power plays as well? Like, it's actually absurd. Max Pacioretty is going to give the Ducks the lead. Once again, it is now a 3-2 game. We have the power play to start the third, but we're down by one. Oh, that might be it. That might be the dagger. Blake Coleman scores, making it a two-goal game. We have 35 shots, and we just can't beat this guy. Joey Decord is on one. 5-2, that is game. Unfortunately, the Edmonton Oilers will be deleted in round number one but it was a solid run. Thanks, Malkin, for nothing. You know what? I don't care. We got our cup, finally. So, have a little bit of leeway now. The Stanley Cup final is between the Boston Bruins and the Winnipeg Jets. We already know what Boston's team looks like. Let's have a look at the Jets. The Winnipeg Jets have Verhage, Barzell, and Troy Terry, Coyle, Hurdle, and Skinner on their second line. Some good depth here, too. Wow. Charlie McAvoy quarterbacking their defense with Brendan Dillon, then Sandheim and Perbix. Semyon Varlamov is their netminder. Let's see who wins. One day at a time. There wasn't a game that day, but there is, and the Boston Bruins go up 2-0. The Winnipeg Jets bring it back to a 2-1 series. 3-1. Boston is really in the driver's seat here, and they close it out. I don't know what it was about their roster, but apparently... It was a super team. Stamkos and Marshy both had six points. Gostas Bear had five. What the heck? Swayman did not get it done. He was getting exposed in the playoffs. Good for you, Shane. Proud of ya. The Stanley Cup winning Ilya Samsonov had a sub 900 save percentage, an 897, and Varlamov got snubbed. Same with Joey Decord. Charmak had 22 points, Pionk had 20, and then we got 19 from Faber and Makar. Without a shadow of a doubt. Your Conn Smythe winner, Vinny Trocek. 31 points in 23 games. That is absurd. Matthews had 27 in 17, but no. Bedsy also played well, 25 points. And we got Coyle with 24. That's interesting. Matthews does get the Art Heart combo and Montour with the... Montour with the Norris. So far, this is the Islanders show. Kuzmenko gets the Lady Bing. The Calder goes to Bedsy, which, yeah, his team won the President's Trophy and the Stanley Cup. So it would be insane to give it to anyone else. Troach did get the Khan Smythe, Varlamov with the Vesna and the Jennings. Pulak is awarded the Masterton, whereas Hennessy is awarded the Jack Adams. The Kidney gets the Selkie, and it's gonna be Matthews again. Yep, cleaning up, like I said, the janitor. Your playoff tree is as follows. Boston never even went to seven games, so they never had a scare. The Stanley Cup Finals was actually the series they went to the least amount. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. If you have video ideas, leave it down below. If you tried this draft, let me know how yours went. If you could like and subscribe, that would be fire. I understand we're going to the bottom of the barrel for these video ideas, but what can you do? On that note, folks, I'll see you soon.